Hello everyone, peace of Christ to all. This is a Christian Prince speaking to you. And today we are going to respond to some of the Muslims' claim. You know, always it's very important that we speak with intelligence. And it's required for us to examine things and, you know, to be human. You know, part of the best feature of a human being is that we have a brain. For, for sure, animals, they have a brain. But our brain can really go beyond what animals can do. Now, when somebody come to me and he tried to convince me that Islam is a religion and it have uh, amazing reasons to convert to it, then I have to examine what they are saying. I'm not going to reject what they say, like automatically. I'm going to study, I'm going to search, I'm going to see. In this video here, <clears throat> which is made by uh, Peace TV, uh, you know, they got an American convert and he say things which doesn't make sense at all. Believe in Jesus, peace be upon him. Muslims believe in Jesus, peace upon him. You know, he was shocked when he heard this. You know, it's very funny. So what if somebody believe in Jesus? Is that a reason for me to believe that he is right? Uh, actually, all those who are called scammers, they believe in Visa card. And they believe in MasterCard, it's real. Uh, but they are fake one. So, believing in something, it doesn't make you good. Uh, it, it, it's at the, at the end of the day, it's what the reason of this belief. If the reason is to deceive, it's mean you are not really a believer. And Muhammad, he told them that I believe in Jesus as a prophet of God, but the reason he need the accreditation of Jesus, the name of Moses, the name of all the Jewish prophets, this is why he used their names to fool people like you. Uh, because denying them is not going to help him. He knows that those are very well-known, established names, and people believe in them all over, especially at the time of Muhammad. There was only two growing Jewish religion. Uh, we can say the Jewish did not grow, really, but Christianity was growing very fast, and Muhammad he had no choice, actually, except to go through Christianity to claim to be a prophet. Let us examine the second thing. I'm just going to go in short uh, respond, and then we go in deep. We will, cho will choose one of those reasons, and then we will go deep for them. The second thing I found out about Islam was that Muslims believe in one God. He found that Muslims believe in one God. You know, this is really funny. That's uh, like, do Christians even believe in three gods? If you go to the first page in the Bible, in Genesis, it says, you, you know, worship your God alone. Alone. Like, do you know what alone mean? So, it's very funny to say that I converted to Islam because I discovered that Muslims believe in one God. Okay, well, the people who worship Satan, they believe that he is the only one God. Does that make them a religion of truth? It's very stupid argument again. Believing in one God or 10 or 50 is not the reason. If they are real or not, this is the reason. You know, because it's not about the numbers. Who care about the numbers? What we care for is this, this truth. So if there is, if the truth is there is 100 God, okay, then well, there is 100 God. And believe in one, in one God will make you stupid then. So it's not about the number. It's about if they are truly exist or not. Let us continue. And they did not compromise on that. They believed in... They don't compromise, Muslims don't compromise about worshipping one God. Like, you know, Muslims compromise in everything. And stop being arrogant, you know, foolish. You see, Muhammad himself, Muhammad himself, he worshipped many gods and he compromised. He changed his mood due to the direction or the needs he, he think it's better for him. He don't care even for God. You know, when Muhammad he allowed his followers to have temporarily relationship for sex, uh, okay, do you compromise? Is that a compromise or not? You know, if God is one and you follow the order of this one, how come this one in the time of Moses forbid people to do adultery, but your prophet in his time, he allowed them to have one night stand and to pay for it, and this is not marriage, but Muslim, they call it temporarily marriage, just to make it look nicer. And now because they are ashamed of this, they say, oh, the Shia do that, but the Sunni don't do that. You know what? Shia, Sunni, it doesn't matter. This is a part of the Quran. It's a verse of the Quran. And the one who ordered is your God. The one you call, you call him the one God. 
doesn't make him if he is 100 or 120 or 1 will not fix that he is a god of adultery and he approve it legally officially and we could make it official business actually the Quran is the only book it says force not your girls to do prostitution if they choose a chastity which means this is a legal license if the girl she agree to do prostitution it's fine if she refuse not to force her but if you force her Allah is all forgiven and then they come to the point they say it is the one God who care about how many he is I care about his value he have no value your God he have no value your God can't be exist because we will prove it in the second in the coming point Alhid and they would not budge and I began to read through one which was about the miracles of the Quran let us talk about the miracles of the Quran actually my coming book it's already ready actually I did not uh, it's uh, as soon as going to be printed um, uh, maybe more most of you knows that I have the deception of Allah volume number one and people love it because it's full of information but soon I'm going to publish my second book which is responding to the miracles or what I call it the false miracles of the Quran which is amazing funny stupid claims of Muslims trying to convince people that Islam is a religion of science when it is the opposite like you know religion of science the God who says that women they have a sperm coming from their ribs like come on man you know what is funny when Muslims speak about miracles and the God who say that the man have a sperm is coming from his backbone doesn't matter how much you try to play with the translation we will expose it and we will show everybody how stupid this God is but now today actually I'm going to focus in one thing the intelligence of the God of Islam I'm not talking about science now about intelligence like average intelligence I'm not going to talk about a genius one I'm not going to say let us see if God of Islam is <coughs> Uh, 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 an amazing genius God if we go to chapter 2 in the Quran <laughs> uh, and actually this story appeared in many sides of the Quran uh, chapter 2 verse number 34 chapter 7 verse number 11 uh, chapter 15 verse number 31 uh, so like you know uh, there is many places 1761 many places tell us something about this God and that story simply just to make it simple when Allah this is in the start before the creation of Adam uh, Allah told the angels that he is going to create a creature and that creature is the human that a human supposedly is going to be Adam and let us go to the English version of it so you can read with me actually sorry for clicking in the Arabic one uh, you can go to Yusuf Ali you can go to Shakir and by the way all of them they are false translation because Muslims try to make their book more beauty and more appealing by giving them this false translation however if we go here uh, Allah is uh, speaking to his angels telling them I'm going to create someone in this earth and the story actually started from verse number 30 here as you see it Allah came to the angels and he told them that he is going to create someone to inherit the earth and they said and the funny by the way <laughs> Allah is saying he will create someone to inherit the earth but he created him in heaven and heaven in Islam is not on the earth and we prove that in our book uh, the volume uh, in the deception of Allah uh, which is proven another, another mistake in the Quran because there's a contradiction in that point however here when Allah he said he's going to create Adam the angels right away said to him are you going to create someone to mischievement and shed the blood then Allah he did reject their claim and he told them I know what you know not which mean what you are saying about Adam would do mischievement and he will share the blood this is absolutely a lie so then Allah he decided to prove to them that they are stupid ignorant who do not know anything and how Allah he did this and by the way uh, the Quran take the story or some of it from the Bible as usual but he make it funny stupid it doesn't make sense so Allah taught Adam all the names of all things 
Then he placed them before the angels and he said, Tell me the names of those, if the, of these, if you are right. If you are right about what? If you are right about your claim that Adam will do mischief men. So the whole purpose of this examination or this test, the test uh, that you will uh, uh, answer for those uh, uh, names, if you can answer, then you know the unseen, you know the future. So he's proving to them that you do not know the future, you do not know the unseen. So what is the names of those things? And this is very funny, stupid way to prove that you are God. Imagine I have a dog, I call him Tutu. Then you see me in the street and I say to you, what is the name of my dog? You say, I don't know. I say, okay, well, if I tell you the name of my dog, is that a proof that I'm God? <laughs> That's very funny. Aren't you the one who named them anyway? So what the point is very stupid thing to prove what the name of those things, you know? Especially you are the one who gave them the names. Uh, they can give them their own names and that will make them a God too. Very stupid argument. But the story here did not stop, you know? Then they said to him, glory to the to the to thee of knowledge. We have none. So here we go. It's about knowledge again. So Allah trying to prove that they don't have knowledge. He have knowledge. But all of us know that Adam, he did mischievement. And actually in the same page, we see that later Allah, he kicked out Adam from the heaven. So he started doing mischievement, not even in the earth. He did it in the heaven. And he kicked him out of the heaven. And he told him to go down him and Satan and Eve to the earth so in the same page it's a proven that Allah is an idiot he is stupid he cannot make a story and the angels know better than him and they know the future and he do not know the future and one of the things Muslims they say that Allah he is the Almighty who knows the he is the only one he know the future actually there's a verse here saying that you know so then uh, uh, the story continue and we, we see that uh, because the angels, they ask uh, they, they, or they question how Allah will create Adam who is going to do mischiefment and Allah reject that and he proved to them that they do not know the names which means they do not know that Adam who would do that and this is false. Then later he order all the angels to bow down to Adam, which is very funny again. Because they did accuse Adam of a lie which is absolutely not a lie because all of us we know that even the verse here is going to show you that Allah kicked out Adam from heaven he asked he order all the angels to bow down to Adam which mean the one Muslim they say that we don't compromise with worshiping one God it's absolutely a false because Adam himself was God in a certain point for the angels because when Allah himself, he ordered the angels to bow down. Bow down is a not, not, not an act of respect. Not an act of respect. Muslim, they will say to you, we bow down only to Allah. Okay. Well, this is your God. Allah himself is ordering the angels to bow down. Which means he is the first one ever in the history of mankind who order someone to bow to a human. And that even an angel, not even a human being. Which is even more ugly. Because angels, they commit no sin. But actually in Islam... Angels are sinners. Like, you know, in Christianity, when the angel commits sin, that is a failing angel, we call him Satan. In, and then he is not angel no more. He is not considered as an angel. But in Islam, angels here, all of them, with no exception, even Jibreel, the one who wrote the Quran, all the angels, been ordered to bow down to Adam, which means angels are less quality than a human being, which is very funny. Because Muslims, they call Jibreel a Holy Spirit in the Quran. The Quran doesn't say that this is Jibreel, but the Muslims say that he is the Holy Spirit. So if Jibreel is one of those angels and he bow down to Adam, it means he is the one or he is one of those who accuse Adam of false accusation, which is a sin. But later actually we prove that Allah is the false because what the angels said is true. Adam did mischievement. So Adam in here, the story of Adam here proved to us that angels in Islam, they are committing sin and they are not good. And that proved that the Holy Spirit of the Quran cannot be the angel Jibreel because we cannot call someone a sinner even for once, a holy spirit. Holy is holy and never commits sin. And that proved again the stupidity of those who say that the Holy Spirit in the Quran present the angel Jibreel. This is a point very important I want people to remember. But here we, we continue.